Hi guys, Hayes here. I'm an artist and speed painter from Malaysia and today I, I just uploaded a new sketch brush uh, pack that extends out from the original sketch brush and we are just gonna do something fun and simple that will improve your brush control in, in digital art. So if you go and download this brush, that's just this um, sketch brush variant brush set here that you can download and then load into your Procreate and once you load into your Procreate you will see it here so let's talk about some of them first okay and also you will receive um, this file this Procreate file which will be a template for you guys to practice your brush strokes so Let's talk about the new brushes. So I've adjusted the brush a little bit and you should download this one because it's a little bit easier to control when it's at a smaller size. So this is the original um, sketch brush but I updated it. And as I've said before, it's very responsive if you press hard. So once you press hard, you can actually go very thick and then you can go back to thin with a slight fade here. And I've also updated with um, some other variants. So the first one, if you notice, has kind of like a soft edge to it. And so I have another variant here that is uh, hard, completely hard. If you want something that is completely hard, you can use the second one. And then if you notice, every one of them have like a sharp tail here. It's like a sharp tail and sharp tip. So if you want to start with a rounded uh, edge, so you should use the blunt brush. So this one is just this, this same brush, but then it's blunt. So, so let me just... Um, so you see it starts out blunt, but you can fade it out. And then I have the next one, which is exactly this same brush, but then it gives a sort of a fade. Um, so you see it fades halfway and I will show you guys like how to control it and use it later on. So we also have a sketch medium blunt fade, which is exactly the same as this, but it's uh, a bit soft, the edges, so you can use it for shading. And then we have a Chinese brush here that I love to use. And also we have a sketch wash here, which is the same brush that is that you can just manipulate by changing the opacity. Okay, so Without further ado, we can start our exercise today. So if you receive, okay, if you receive this file, there is actually 10 exercise for you to do and you can just um, turn them on. So you should follow them from the correct order, like 1 to 10, because um, the most difficult one is of course the last one. And then you should go and start from the earliest one. So, let's, so grab your Procreate and your pencil and then we can get started. So first we will start with the goldfish. This is a really pretty uh, drawing that's done with just the sketch brush. And then so we're just going to do this. It's so easy, just make another layer on top. Uh, you can use the updated one. Okay, and then all you have to do is pick a size and make sure you do each stroke one time. So right now, I'm just going to do the small ones first. Let me see. Okay. So this is the eyes, this is the mouth. And let's give it a belly. And then now we'll do the uh, head. So the head is... Uh, press it. You have to kind of experiment with the size and the pressure. Okay. And then you can follow that up with... A fin. Okay, now for the tail. It's very simple. It's just four tails. Lightly touch, press, let go. 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 Okay, and now we're just gonna do this with for the other uh, one more fish. Okay, so be mindful about your brush size. Okay, just the eyes and the mouth so press and let go press let go light press let go 
light, press, let go. Okay, stomach. Okay, for the fin, you can just continue using the same size. Just control the brush size with your uh, pressure. Okay, now for the tail, the fun one. Lightly press, press hard and let go. Lightly press, press hard, let go. Lightly press, press hard and let go. Lightly press, press hard and let go. Okay, so now we have two fishes already and it really looks good. Look, it looks so cute. Okay, we're going to do the red one and then you can do the others on your own. So just pick a red color and then we will do the eyes first and the mouth, the body. And then we do the head, press, lightly press, press harder, let, oops, press harder and let go. And then do the fin. So this is a very, very zen exercise. Press hard, let go, lightly press, press hard, let go. Lightly press, press hard, let go. You will love this exercise, they are so cute and easy to do. So once you have the red, you can just switch back to your black and put in an eye. There we go, now we have three cute goldfishes. So that's very, very simple. Uh, once you have done with the goldfish, we are going to move on to the, the bamboo exercise. Okay, for the bamboo exercise, I'm just going to turn on the bamboo layer on and give it a lower opacity. New layer. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is the branches. And this branch is actually a lower opacity wash. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the actually the same updated brush is okay just I'm gonna put the opacity of the brush to like 40% and let's see if I can get this right oh no yep this is about right uh, about um, 17% yeah so what you want to do is uh, start at the bone so the bamboo is just made of bones like that so start at one end I'm gonna start here I'm gonna press and I'm gonna just flick it up with a lower pressure. It takes a few try to get it correct, and then I'm gonna do the bottom one, and then press hard at the bottom and flick it up again. So just gonna do that slower this time. Start at the top one, press, flick down, go down, press, and flick back up quickly. So the reason why you want to flick it back up quickly is to uh, in a way, how do we call this? Um, this is actually what we call finishing a stroke. So you do not finish a stroke uh, at the end, but you continue the motion back where you just started. It's kind of like a Chinese philosophy. So what we are painting here is the bamboo, which is actually the first ever painting you will get to paint when you learn Chinese painting. So let's start at the bone, flick it down, flick it down. Press hard, flick it up, press, flick it back down. Press hard, flick it back up, press hard, flick it back down, and flick it back up. Okay, I'm gonna make my brush size smaller. Press hard, flick it back here. Press hard, flick it to the right. Okay, so now we have our bones. And we're just gonna move our opacity back up and drop the size a little bit. We're gonna add like the structure in between the bones so the structure is really simple the light touch press press flick back up light touch press press flick back up and light touch press press flick back up same thing here try to get the exact shape press press flick back up and press, press, flip back up. So now we're ready to do the leaves. Okay, so we're just going to increase a little bit. So now this is a very, very basic uh, stroke that you have to master, which is thin at the beginning and thin at the end, but fat in the center, which is basically a leaf stroke. So this is a very, very good example where we get to practice this. So for those that start blunt, we can start with this one first. So we just press at the beginning and flick down. 
press at the beginning, flick down, press at the beginning, flick down, flick, press and flick. It's just pressing and flicking. Okay. Okay, for strokes that start sharp and end sharp, you would want to start light and press in the center and then let go. Now, um, I want you to be very, very careful about your direction that you are ending in. So let's see for this one, right? Let's say I'm just going to press and let go. So you can see it's fading to the end, but we don't want that. We want the end to be sharp. So we can always flick towards the start of the brush stroke. So like for now, I'm going to start at the end of the leaf and back up to avoid that fade. See, there's a fade here, you see? So if you do not want that fade, you can start the other way instead. Be patient and understand that it takes a few tries to get each stroke correct. So, okay. So it's really, really zen practice. Take your time and get these strokes correct using one stroke. So you can do this as often as you like, like maybe just warm up before your painting, before your sketch. So it's really fun. Okay, I'm going to let you um, do the rest on your own, but so you get the idea. And we can move on to the next one. The next one will be the cherry blossom. So this is the cherry blossom that we're going to do today. So now let's just turn this down a little bit and create a new layer. So now we're going to use a really fun brush this time. So this fun brush is going to be the Chinese brush. And we are just going to let the brush do whatever it wants. We are just going to tell the brush where to go. So I'm just going to do the main, main uh, branch. And I'm just um, pressing down controlling the pressure to get the width that I want but I'm, but I'm letting the brush do whatever it wants to do so every time you hit like a part where you need to turn you press and hold a little bit okay once you realize you can't control the brush it's too big it's time to make it smaller and don't try to control the brush just let it be Things, let it be out of your control, it's fine. All you can do is control the direction and the size. So every time you turn a direction, you hold and give it like a full stop. Hold, full stop, and then flick, and then hold, full stop. That would give it like a, like a knot. Okay, same here, start here, hold, flick, pull, and hold, flick. And flick. It looks really simple, but when you get to do it, you, you will um, find a sweet spot between balancing, uh, controlling the strokes, and letting go, and letting it do what it wants. So it's a very very therapeutic um, and pleasing experience to paint like this. Okay, so for the last branch, just give it a little bit bigger hole and hole, hole, flick hole, flick hole. When you hold, you can press harder. And remember, this is like a one stroke um, painting approach. So. Don't try and repaint and repaint and repaint the same area again because if you do that, it's not it's gonna lose its spontaneity. So make sure your goal is just to like do it once, mistake or not, leave it be. And if you want to do it better, do it again tomorrow. So now we're just gonna do the uh, red. So I'm just gonna pick a cute red and maybe the blunt sketch one. So don't try and cheat and use your fingers and tap. Then there's no point. So what we can do is 
So use the Apple Pencil and do like a circle like that. Control the whole thing. Control your strokes so that they are they end in like a cute petal shape. And then just like a C. Press and release at just experiment and press at the correct rate and know when to press, when to let go. Maybe you want like a full circle that is flat, maybe you want like a C shape, something like that. So take your time and do this. It's gonna be really, really peaceful. Okay, once you have done the red, you can change to the black and put in the lines. Make sure to apply pressure at the beginning of the stroke and then flick down. So press, flick, press, flick, press, flick. Press and circle. Press, circle, press, circle. Okay, and then press, press, flick. Press, flick, press, flick, press, flick, press, flick. So when I press, I kind of like give it like a shake. I press, I shake, and I flick. I press, I shake, and I flick. Press, shake, flick. Press, shake, flick. Press, shake, flick. Okay, so continue on and you will complete this cherry blossom, which is very fun and still very, very easy to do. You can use it to warm up or to just meditate and chill. Now we're going to move on to something fun, which is um, the chicken. So I'm going to create another layer. Bring the chicken down. So in Chinese painting, we always start with opaque first because that's how the ink works. So we're just going to start with the black. And we can go ahead and do the details if you want. Okay. Just drawing the eye. Okay. Flick, press. Press, flick. Lightly press and flick. Press, flick back up, press, flick. So for the body, I'm just going to switch to the Chinese brush and just let it do what it wants. But I press and I flick and I try to follow the shape um, of the stroke. So this is supposed to simulate like the uh, feathers. So we are doing the legs and just going to flick it up. So because we, this is like one stroke technique, we are only um, doing the stroke once. There is room for mistakes, but there's also room for spontaneity. And because of that, it looks very energetic and it looks alive, the painting. So now to the tail is the most fun. Because we get to just play with the brush to get the uh, effect that we want. Such a nice thing to be able to undo. Because sometimes when we do this on the paper, one chance is all we have. Okay, just gonna switch back to uh, maybe the hard brush, and we're gonna do the feet. The feet is just a simple sketch of some holding at the joints, then flicking out. Holding at the joints and then flick it out. And then we're gonna fill in the scaly part with more lines. And now we can move on to our cheeks. Switch the blunt brush will be easier. Mm, let's see. Just do one stroke. Yep. Yep, that's fine. Okay. I think two stroke is easy, like um, two leaves like that, you know, one, two, yeah, that would be easy to do. And then of course for the wings, we want it sharp in the beginning and then center uh, a bit fat and then at the end there, thin again. So it takes a few tries to get, get it correct and then we can adjust the size if we can't get it right or change the brush. You can also do like a C shape for the head and then for the lid. 
for the wings. So cute. So we're just gonna switch to red and give it like a cute little bobble head with the blonde. Give it a little shake at the beginning to get make sure it's fat. Yep, we're just gonna shake it out in the beginning. Okay, and now we can do the tiny brush marks. You, you want to make sure that it's thin and thick at the correct places. And then for joints, make sure you hold. Okay, it's really really simple. Don't forget the beak. Back to red. Use the updated one. Just use any brush that can that can let you achieve the stroke. Okay. And make sure it's just one stroke each time. So now we're just gonna go to should I use the fade? I'm gonna use the wash. Thick black. Yep, this is the one. So we're gonna start with the chicken and do the soft strokes. Even with the soft strokes, it's gonna be one stroke at a time. So sometimes it's I'm pushing and dragging again. Pushing flick, push flick, and then I can adjust the size of the brush again. And then for the tail, we're just going to soften and give it sort of like a shading with this brush. Give it some grass detail. And then for the cheeks, what we're gonna do is just give it a belly and the little legs. So a belly and the little legs. Belly. A belly and a little leg and then we're just gonna put in all the grass so you see it's a really really cute painting that you can use to warm up there this is the one that we just did looks cute right now we're just going to um, increase the difficulty a little bit and do a horse so this horse turn it down put a new layer we're gonna do this entire painting um, hopefully with the Chinese brush so before we do that we're just gonna do the eyes first and some details of the nose okay now we're just gonna switch to the Chinese brush oops and do the rest of the painting with this brush so we're just going to do the eyebrows first and give it a press and letting go. And for the jaw, we're just going to start out light and then press. Then we're going to move to the torso and the neck. So for this part, we're just going to press and shake a little bit and then go down, flick back up. Press, swipe down. And for the belly, it's just... A quick flick. Okay, we're gonna move on to the legs. Try to follow the thick and thin of the drawing that is provided. Remember, it's always thicker at the joints. And then now we can really have fun with the mane and really press and also the tail really really press now I'm just gonna change to the sketch wash and shape the horse up so make sure that when you are shading it's not like that where you are doing something for squiggle you want to really press and make sure it's one stroke like that So for the torso, it's going to be difficult. We're going to move it to the biggest brush and just shade the whole thing up with the minimum amount of strokes, which is two strokes. So this is the horse that we just painted. It looks quite good. Next, we're going to do this barrel. I'm just going to demonstrate a couple of them. Let's just do one that's sitting down. Mm. Yep, 
like this. Okay, so we always start with the body and the head. So we're gonna start with the belly first. Just gonna use the updated brush. Okay, and then for the head, it's something similar to like the cheek. Two strokes is all you need. And then for the wings, try to do it two strokes, one stroke for one wing. So wing one and two. Okay. Now we can do the rest, which is the eye, the beak, and some of the patterns. And then follow through with the wings and the tail. Finally, the legs. So now we have one that's sitting down. We're just gonna continue and do one that is flying. This one would be good. So I'm gonna draw the head. Just changing to the blunt one. One stroke for the body. Okay. And then um, one, two, three, four strokes for the wings. Like that. Light color for the belly. And then we can then add the details in using black. And the eyes, ear, and then mm, the pattern. Make sure you're using the brunt, blunt brush. So for the wings, you're going to start from the tip of the end back to, towards this direction for each stroke. Okay, so just one, two, three. Make sure they're slightly separated so you can see the wings. So these are like the feathers. And then for the tail, it's just one, two, three. Okay. Um, so you can just practice all of them in the same way. I'm just going to demonstrate the last one. So start with the head. And then the torso, maybe it's like a light grey. Maybe we'll change to this um, blunt fade. Yeah. yeah, this is better. Okay, so for this brush, if you click into the brush, brush, go to stroke. Okay, and there is this thing called fall off, if you see here. So the higher the number, the faster the fall off will be. Like, it will be, you see, it's, it's already faded out quickly. So if I put it like maybe like 78%, so it's just starting and it's already gone. But if I at 18, it will last quite some time before it fade out. So yeah. So let's, the default was 36. So you see it fades out like about halfway. So we're just going to find one that is suitable for the body here. So this is definitely not faded enough. Maybe less, like 40, yeah. Okay, do that again to get the stroke perfect. Okay. Now, uh, if you want, you can reset it back to 36. But just so you know, the, the fade brushes, you always have to adjust the fade value to match whatever you want to do, all right? So back to the blunt brush. We're just going to put down the wings and the underside of the tail. Now we're going to move to the black and quickly put in the details. Okay, so this is what we have today for the ones that we just did. So it's quite fun, right? Okay, on to the next one. From, from six onwards, actually, all of them is quite a challenge. So for this next one, we're going to do foliage, which is 7. Actually, from 6 onwards, the difficulty is increasing. So this one is one of the difficult ones. So it'd be great if you can just duplicate a layer and pick out all the colors first like this. And then after that, we can go ahead and reduce the opacity. So one of the advantages of this brush or any brush that you use, uh, traditional or digital, is that you can create a one-stroke leaves and petals and swirls with them so this is like a perfect example to um, practice those for this digital brush 
Okay, so first we shall do the toe. This is the toe, which is the swirl here. So I'm just going to pick the color and change to the blunt. And then slowly work. Press and release. Press, release. And if you release too soon, you get a fade. So you have to time everything properly. Then after that, I'm going to get a yellow and Okay, and then we can proceed. Then we can drop the... Oh, actually it looks quite okay. So, I'm just gonna proceed and work up our way up. Press, release. Press and release. Press, release. Press and release. So this is the way to do the swirls and you can just proceed to finish up all the swirls on this page using this method. Now we're just gonna move on to the single pet, the round petal flowers. So I'm just gonna pick this color. So I'm just gonna press, oh, let me use this color. Press, let go, press, let go. Press, let go, press, let go, press, let go, and press and let go. So that's the way to do it. And then for the insides, um, you can just use your hands to dot, finger sorry. Or you can just use the apple pencil, either way works. So this is how you do the flowers with the round petals and the swirls. Now we are just going to go for another uh, flower which is this one. Okay, I'm just going to use, okay. Increase the size a little bit Too much. Okay, press release press release Press and release press and release press and release and press and release so you have your flower here Before that I'm gonna pick the green press release press release two strokes is enough and then the lighter pink Change it to the hard blend and make sure it's 88% Do the same stroke for the petals press release press release press release press release press and release make sure it's the same size and then you have nice looking flower here so this is what you can achieve with the blunt brush and one more thing that you can achieve is all these swirls another blunt okay yep and then very simple just press and release, press and release, it's really fun. And then after that, um, to do these big flowers, so first you use the dark blue and put in some dots here. Pick the white, use your hands to dot onto the blue that you just painted. And then we're going to pick a dark red and give it a scribble here. Then onto a lighter color. Press and release, press and release, press and release, press and release. You get the idea. Make sure it's all going towards the center. And then we are going to change to the fade uh, using the lighter one, like the color. Press, repeat all the strokes. Press and release, press and release, press and release. Follow back and and then in the, at the end you're just gonna add like three strokes here. There we go. So we have a nice flower here. I feel like Bob Ross today. I have no idea why. So um for the lines you're gonna have to change to the hard brush. Do not use the blunt because you can't get it sharp that way so this is what you can do for the lines yeah just drop the size and remember to use the same brush for the leaves so the leaves okay let's say for example i'm doing this one right so this is what's gonna happen you're gonna uh, you're gonna press at the end and release so if you notice, you have you are painting towards the stalk. So if I do it the other way around, 
Let's say I paint it like that. You can see that it's fatter here instead of here. So make sure it's fatter where it's like closer to your stock. Then it's a more natural. So this is a simple two-stroke two leaf, which means it's one for each side. And then you just let the brush do what it wants. It's really simple. And then after that, you can also um, work on some single, single stroke leaves mm, like this. Just press at the center. Press at the center and release. Mm. And then there's a complex one, which is something like one, two, three, something like that. And then it's like one, two, and three. So these are the leaves. And I think that's it, everything else I've covered. So we can just slowly work your way around this piece to get a feel of how the um, brush reacts and everything. So look, it's so cute and beautiful. So the next one is called Eternal. This is um, a Chinese word called Yong. This is the hardest word to learn to write because it has all the strokes that uh, any Chinese character could have. So if you can do every single stroke for this character and control it well, you will be able to do any stroke using the same brush. Because we first learn how to write Chinese characters and then using the same strokes, we apply that to our paintings. So I'm just gonna demonstrate slowly for this one. Okay. Let's just use the hard blend. Okay, max it up. Okay, so this stroke here is called the dian, which is a dot. So the dot is what we have done for the cherry balsam. Remember when we did a cherry balsam like that, this way, in C shape. So it's something similar. So notice how I would do this dot here. I start at this point. Going here, close, I press in this point, and then I flick towards this direction. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate now. Okay, I'm turning here, I'm pressing, and I flick down. So this is a dot. And this stroke here is called a hen, which is actually a straight line like that. So in the Chinese character, we believe that if a line is like this, it's weak. So a strong line has like a bone structure, which is something like that, which is what we have been uh, painting for the bamboo. So the bamboo has a bone structure, which is actually this same stroke. So th the way to achieve this bone structure is to press down, go across quicker, and then press down again and flick back right to the center. So it's more of like a come here and then come back this Remember when we did when we were doing the bamboo, we were told to go back up. Yeah, this is the same reason we have to follow through our stroke. So, but because this is a compound letter, this is actually the hen, and then we go down all the way and go up. So this is a straight line. It's called su, which is a straight line here, and this one is just press and then go, and then straight down, and then here there is a slight joint, and then we will flick up. So this is actually a flick. So this is actually three strokes in one. And it's really, really hard to do this in one go without messing up. So we are going to do it in one stroke as per the character's requirement. So I'm going to press down now, move here, press down again, light, lighten my touch, come back down, press, and then flick up quickly. So we've got this stroke now. Now we're going to do this one. So this is also another flick stroke. So this flick stroke is uh, like like the stroke we did for the bird wing. So like that. So it's like a fat stroke, fat stroke, and then thin, thin, uh, thin at the end like that. Okay. And then this is a compound stroke. So it goes up and comes down in one one go. So this stroke here, hmm, like a slant or a slope. So it's like a slow, yeah, it's always something like that. It's like a slow, slow thinning of the line. 
as you go down. So you need to practice this one, which is you press it, flick it up, press, and then slowly come down and release the pressure slowly so that it gradually reduce the size. Okay, so let's do that again. Flick up, press, gradually release. Okay, there we go. And then we're going to finish the character using this one. This one is the same flick, but instead of flicking up, this one is flicking up, this one is flicking down. Okay, so we're just going to flick, press, flick down quickly. So if you flick down quickly, the size will naturally be smaller. And then for the last one, it's uh, this is the pier. This one is a bit uh, different. So what we start here, we go down here, and then we press here. We release carefully to get the same shape. So I start here, press, release the pressure a little bit. Now I'm pressing harder. Okay, now I'm here, I'm pressing, pressing, and then I'm releasing. Okay, so it's something like that. So I'm just going to do it the usual speed that uh, we usually do. So press, go down, press, and come here. So if you linger too long here, you start to have some marks like, you see you start to like press, 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 and then you see it's starting to have marks like that. So you need to do that as quick as you need to, to get the stroke. There we go. This is perfect then. Alright, so this is the one that we did now. So if you practice just this character every day, I guarantee you, your brush skills with your Apple Pencil would be amazing, okay? This is like the ultimate practice. So now we are going to do the koi. The koi is not a simple one to do, so I'm just going to demonstrate uh, one of it, which is um, the black one. Mm, so I'm just going to demonstrate this one. Turn the opacity down. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, use the medium blunt fade and turn down the opacity. Press, release. So you see, I have like a fade. This is how it looks like. It's like a fade here, okay? So once I have this fade, I can then uh, slowly do another one, which is on, along the bone side. So I'm just like this. Okay, this is what we need. Now we can do the hard blunt fade and use it to do the fins. Turn down the opacity. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Flick, 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 flick. Flick, flick, flick. Flick, 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 flick. Okay, now we can move on to the default sketch heart and putting the details the eyes the gills and then the scales so if you use a brush you can use the exact same technique that you're using today to practice so if you happen to have like a chinese brush or a round brush a watercolor brush squirrel brush that is pointed tip you can actually uh, replicate all of these paintings that I teach you here today. So for the tail, just going to press, release. There we go. Now we have our koi fish. Ta-da! So you can do your koi fish. The koi fish is actually quite difficult because it has a many many kinds of strokes. And for the last uh, exercise, you can do the portrait, which is this one. So you don't have to, there's no painting involved, so you see, actually this is just on this um, plain grey black ground. And all you need to do is just line the black and the white. So you can turn this down, just the layer 11 down, make another layer and try and duplicate this portrait. But I'm just going to roughly tell you what strokes I use for which so let me so this is the Chinese brush and underneath it is the wash this is the hard uh, hard 
and then all these are the medium oh no these are the wash these are the wash and this is just the original updated brush and of course this is the uh, is this the fade no this is the wash this is the wash this is the wash so as you can see all you need to do is just to drop in all the information for the darks and the light and if you have a medium tone background like these ones like this one it has a gray background you will already be able to see the form and the structure of the face so try this one out and make sure for the eyelashes you are going in the correct directions like this like if you go this way you can see it's thicker here so you might want to reverse and do it like that instead then it will listen to you so you can control the brush like that I'm not going to uh, give a tutorial for this last one because you should be able to do it already now that you have done all the rest of the sketches so have fun and enjoy yourself with this short simple practice that is going to be fun and meditative thank you so much for watching for the next video for people who always ask i will be doing a dark skin portrait tutorial with probably some new resources as well up on my gum road thank you so much for watching see you again soon guys bye